So today we're going to talk about how to get started with Orb Producer. Now, really, the way to get started is to type in Hexagon or type in Orb. And if you're in Ableton, all of these things will appear. Orb Synth X is a separate VST. It's just appeared because I've typed in Hexagon. But um, it's a completely separate thing, so you can just ignore that. But these other four VSTs will pop up, and they're part of Orb Producer. Now, the way it works, it's kind of like Captain Epic in that you need the chords to be processed first and everything will follow. So let's just do that now. I'm just going to bring Orb chords into a new track. Straight away, you will see four different chords that are available to you. And you can just listen to those chords pretty quickly there. And you have the options to uh, enter them yourself by clicking this button here, as so you can actually enter your own chords. And uh, that's your MIDI input chords into the system. We're not going to do that now. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the basics there. And then what you can do is you can actually just drag these to the DAW. So once you've got chords in there, you can just bring them into the DAW. We're not going to do that now either. Um, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to make sure door sync is on. So what that does is it just syncs the chords that you've got here with the DAW, and it will just follow the timing uh, of the tempo of the DAW. So for example, if we click on this button here, just speed it up a bit or we'll slow it down a lot so it's just following the tempo of the DAW and I can press the space bar which is what I've done now to stop the thing from playing which is I think the best way to use this thingy so fantastic you can also change the sound here so as you're playing you can change the sound so can just try different sounds. I think it's also always better to use kind of a neutral sound when you're uh, trying to work out the arrangement of your track. And then you have these four chords. Now you can go ahead and click on Orb to regenerate chords, but it does more than that. It generates patterns. So we're not going to look at patterns right now. We're going to just look at the chords. What we can do is we can click on this little X button to remove the chords that we have, and we just really end up with one chord. You can select that chord, and you can do stuff with it. So you can randomize the chord. Just keep clicking that. You can randomize the actual selected chord. Let's just add four chords while clicking this plus button. So when you randomize here, it randomizes all the chords, but it always makes sure the first one is in C minor. But if you select C minor and just click on this one, this will just randomize the selected chord to anything. And then you click on this and it will randomize everything again based on what the first chord is. So once again, let's just remove those chords and we'll just add, we'll make sure the first one is a seventh chord. Just add another one, which is not a seventh chord. We'll just listen to those two together. So we can just add another chord here and it's artificial intelligence. It's kind of working out what the next best chord is. So I don't like that chord, so I'm just going to click on it, make sure it's yellow, and then I'm just going to randomize the selected chord. So I'm just going to keep doing that until it gives me one that I think might be good. And we'll just do another one here, and let's just click on them separately. That one I'm not sure I like, so we could just click on another one, and we can just quickly play it this way. Let's do it again. We'll just randomize it again. Almost there. And 
and again. Try this one. Okay, so I, I don't mind that one at all. Let's just speed things up a bit. Now, if we want, we can, you know, just select, we can um, <clears throat> select seventh, ninth, or eleventh, okay, and we can just add, um, say, seventh intervals. So if we just do that, it applies it to all of them. Or ninth intervals. And you can just keep messing around here until you get maybe a sound that you like. Or you can just undo by clicking that button there and that will just bring everything back to its original state. And, you know, obviously we can keep adding and adding and adding chords. I've just added two more chords. And it takes you to the second page, but you can, you can reduce, whoops, we can actually expand how many chords we see on the page. But in this case here, I'm just going to remove those two extra chords that I added. Just to, It was just really just to show you um, how you could visualize and add different chords. Now, once you've got, I think, the chords that you like, then you can go in and start uh, messing with things like polyrhythms and rhythmic rules. And you can also start randomizing complexity, density, bar length, all this fun stuff. So let's just start with the basic every note. And as you can see here, it starts changing things. So let's just start randomizing or changing things like density. If you want, really, you could just randomize everything that is on the top hand side by making sure that is on, but not randomizing everything that's on the bottom. So things like octave polyphony and so let's just click on orb and that's just going to randomize density complexity and bar length let's keep keep doing it until we get something we like and if we don't really want to go there we can just click on polyrhythm and we can start changing things like reducing the complexity, density. We can increase the bar length. And we can start messing with the complexity of the polyrhythm. And the let's just switch the polyrhythm off and we'll start messing with rhythmic rule. So every eighth note. So you notice this gets switched off when you start changing things like bar length. Let's go back and change some of these sounds. I'm not going to say that the sounds are that inspiring <laughs> at this moment in time. There is a synth button that you can choose here. And in that synth button, you can um, you can change some of how the sounds work. Or sound, sorry. So we might want to, for example, change the, if I could find the filter. <laughs> oh, here it is, the filter. We can change the filter level. can bring some unison noise in there. Oh, this is the sub. Okay, so yeah, I've almost forgotten how the synth works, but basically you have these dots here and that, all that's doing is switching sections on. So if we want two oscillators on, you can see this is by default there on. You can just have one oscillator on by unclicking. Oh, hopefully this works. Or maybe it doesn't. <laughs> um, oh no, that doesn't work. Okay, so it is different to the synth that I've got, so that's fine. So here, if I click on the button, it does actually um, apply 
the delay reverb drive so in certain sections the button works in certain other sections it does not i don't know why <laughs> the sub for example noise section and unison sections have to be enabled and we've got a mod matrix here we can start changing things like filters or we can just click on randomize lovely stuff so if we just now switch that off and go back to MIDI almost forgotten how to do it <laughs> so if we bring that off then we have Basically, we've got our chords, basically, and we can um, change um, any of these sections and we know how to select our chords. Now, for whatever reason, just say you're just really sick to death of what you're hearing, you just don't like any of it, you can now go ahead and click on this magnificent big orb circle button. Let's just do that. And it literally changes everything, including chords. It changes your chords, changes your rhythms, changes the complexity. Let's unclick rhythmic rule. Just keep doing that. It doesn't change the sound though. We can just change it ourselves. So that is very cool. So once we've got our chords, and by the way, these are you know not sort of chords I would care about more <laughs> normally, but uh, that's fine. We can just bring in the bass now. As I said before, all the other instruments will follow the chord of all chords. So let's just play them together. Now this is door sync by default. Let's change the rhythmic rule of the bass. Now, once again, we will just randomize the bottom section. Slow things down a bit. Now let's bring in an arpeggio. Now, I think the arpeggio is, yeah, it's gonna be, look lacking, it's gonna look like an arpeggio. So what I wanna do now is go back to chords and make that less busy sounding. So we'll just have uh, a polyrhythmic rule, which is you know less busy like that. And we'll just go back to arpeggio. We'll just hear it without the arpeggio. back to orb chords and we just change that sound so it's more in the background it's better let's uh, randomize the arpeggio let's increase the octave a little bit Let's add a bit of silence there because it's a bit too busy. And some polyphony. Polyphony means that you'll have one or more notes, or one or two notes playing on top of each other at certain points. And some human touch. And less syncopation. Now let's bring in finally the melody. So we'll just bring the melody section in. As I said, they all follow each other and we'll just hear the default melody that's come up, artificial intelligence melody. Uh, let's, let's randomize the melody. So you'll notice you have kind of this lyrical melody as well as a rhythmic and polyrhythmic melody. The lyrical melody, I believe, is just there to help you write lyrics. So just imagine yourself singing this. Let's um, add some more lyrics. So it's just really there for that reason. But you can always just switch that off 
or you can switch it on with the Polar Rift. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the bass because I don't think the bass line sounds like a bass. So I'm going to go back in here and change the bass and make it kind of a bit longer. So every beat note, we'll do something like this. Change the sound of that bass. Call it a dry bass. The octave is nice and low. Less complex. And now I'm just going to bring my favorite, my favorite um, sidechain tool in. I like to add a sidechain to my bass lines. Actually, I'd like to add them to quite a lot of tracks. <laughs> It's a really kind of weird sounding melody. It's that bass. Just change that bass there to something different. Fat bass. Just a bit loud, so I'm just reduce the. funky beat. Let's just do that here. So once again, we can take all of these um, notes and we can just extract the, um, we can extract the MIDI and just use any sound that we like. So what we can do now is for the bass line, we can just extract the bass here and put it into a new MIDI track. And I hope it's going to work. And I'm going to go back into the plugins. I'm going to actually use the Orb Synth X because I don't really like it. And I thought maybe this is a good way for you guys to see what it does. So it's just a solo that. So let's just solo that now. And this is the Orb Synth X, which they offer. Once again, it's nothing to do with the producer, uh, but I just thought I'd just show you how it works because it's pretty cool. So what we want to do here is we want to add the second oscillator. And we do want to loop this, otherwise this will... That's better. And uh, we can do stuff like um, add a bit of drive and saturation, remove delay, we can add a bit of chorus, and uh, we've got the sub there, we can add a bit of noise, and some unison to just make it sound wide, so we'll just add a bit of wide unison. Let's add four voices instead of two. And we have a filter cut off here. Sorry, just going to increase that resonance there and the cut off, reduce a bit. Um, the attack, we just have that right at the top level. And we can just change the, the waveform. So we have a square wave. And just increase the amount of square wave, the rate. Let's 
go ahead and change the analog. We'll change now. So this is where it gets really interesting. You've got um, electric noise vowel. These are really cool. Vowel is really cool. And we change the different types of vowels that we can use. Let's try Nano Screamer. Didn't try. And we can try Electric. Electric's awesome. And let's just mess around with the second oscillator. Get an FM synth going there. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. And we'll just change the types of sound that we have in both patterns. Let's just go back to vowel here because I like to vowel a lot. Now it gets really interesting because we've got the glide here. A bit of saturation and tone. Some delay. Some reverb. Let's take the delay off so you can hear the reverb. It just makes it sound really wide. And so does the chorus, actually. Let's just change the... <laughs> we change the timing of the left and right sides. And we can just sync it to the BPM. Very cool. Now let's just bring that... Let's see if that fits back into the song. So, you know, it's a really cool tool. I know I'm not here to show you the Orb Synth X, but it's uh, pretty cool. And if you are interested, I can do an even bigger, more in-depth tutorial on Orb Synth X. And just like the um, Orb chords, uh, you can actually click on randomize and just get any sound you want. And I haven't seen that on many instruments, actually. To be honest, I think it might be a relatively unique thing, but let's just hear uh, how some of this randomization could sound. Reduce that volume. I mean, it is so exciting to hear the sort of sounds that come out of this thing. So anyway, I am done. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I digressed a lot. Just That's just me. That's how I do stuff. But um, any questions that you have about the Orb producer or even about the Orb Synth X, shout out, say something in the comments or contact me um, because I love talking about this stuff. So thank you very much. And until next time, Thank you and enjoy Orb. It's fun.